the only other reason to do breast MR other than screening for breast cancer is for breast implants. And as Shilpa said, that's probably the only reason if you're just looking for integrity of implants, like you're looking for implant rupture, you don't need to give contrast. If you want to look for implant rupture as well as screen the breast parenchyma, you will need contrast. But if you're only looking for implant rupture, you can get away with a non-contrast MRI. We Im do image breast implants in mammography, ultrasound, and MRI. In mammography, is very limited, and we can generally make out only extracapsular rupture, where there's a gross a rupture of the whole fibrous capsule and the silicone outside, so it's extremely limited. Ultrasound does show some findings on breast implants, ruptures, but again, very difficult to see. And MRI is extremely sensitive and quite specific for breast implants. So if there's a question of breast implant, yes, we do sometimes start with ultrasound, but MRI is actually really, really good. So if it's just for rupture, probably MR, you can straight away, one of the few areas where you can straight away do a breast MRI. So, the imp so before we go into what we see on MRI, it's important to know what kind of implants we use. Uh, most common are the saline and the silicon implants. Silicon implants are used about 80% of the times and saline about 20. There was, in a few years in the middle, there was a reason not using silicon implants, but silicon implants are back in fashion. You can get single lumen implants that can be saline and saline single lumen implants when they rupture, the saline just dissolves in the breast parenchyma and there's disfiguration. You really don't need an imaging tool to tell you there's breast implant rupture. The other implants we see are double lumen where you can have a uh, silicon inside and just saline outside and you can have inverse double lumens where they have a inside now they have an expander where they fill up uh, the, it's inflatable. So they've put the implant and then they inflate it over time to the size that they want. Those are seen more and more after mastectomy and I've seen less of them on imaging so far. So just to show you what a single implant looks like, you can see uh, in this there's just a single implant. You can uh, see it very well here. There's silicon suppressed images. So you're actually suppressing the silicon, so you're seeing it dark. And in this breast, you can see there's a silicon implant with saline around it. So it's a lumen implant with a uh, saline around it. So you can actually see the difference in this MRI image of the right and the left. Thank you. Then we can differentiate implants by the implant position. You have retroglandular or you have rectopectoral. So in rectoglandular or it's called subglandular, the implant is in front of the pectoralis muscle. This is the most commonly placed implant, but they also sometimes place implant behind the pectoralis muscle. You can see the pectoralis muscle draping across the implant. And that is usually very often done after MRM. If you want to look at the internal structure of the implant, that's best done on the sagittal, axial, and T2 weighted images. Well, if you want to look for extra capsular uh, silicon, which you're looking for extra capsular rupture, you can very well see it on the inversion recovery sequences with water suppression. So these are the normal findings. So when an implant is placed in the breast, the breast sort of forms a fibrous capsule around the implant. So this is what the fibrous capsule is. There's a thin fibrous capsule. So you have the implant shell as well as a fibrous capsule. Little bit of fluid around the implant in that fibrous capsule between the implant and fibrous capsule is normal. Radial folds. This is another thing that is often seen in normal implants and sometimes we are not sure if this is a sign of an implant rupture. So radial fold, you basically will see this line and hypointense line into that's coming perpendicularly from the implant shell. And usually there's no fluid in between this fold. It's just a fold. And this is normal. This is not like a teardrop sign, which we'll see later, which, signs, which are signs of an intracapsular rupture. So just to show you that this is the sum amount of fluid that you see around the implant here, here, which is normal. And this is a radial fold. It's coming perpendicular. There's no fluid in between the fold. There's just a fold. This is normal. You do see these kinds of folds when you image implants. This is not a sign of implant rupture. So the early complications of implant, which we don't really image much, but you may once in a while get an indication for that. You can get seroma, hematoma infection, like with any other surgery. In implants, you do get contractures, which is basically uh, the fibrous capsule basically hardens and thickens and it may change in shape. 
Uh, implant rupture is the commonest reason we do breast MRI. You can get, if there's extraversation of silicon, you may get a silicon granuloma formation in the breast parenchyma. And really, there is associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is known with silicon implants. So the commonest cause, as I said, for MR imaging is rupture. When you look at it, you always look at the shape and the position of the implant first before you start looking at things further. The risk of rupture does increase with the age of implant. As you reach 10 years of implant, the amount 15% of implants will show some sign of rupture. They're seen more commonly in patients who've had mastectomies rather than people who've had implants for cosmesis. Okay, so you can have two types of uh, rupture. You can have intracapsular rupture or extracapsular rupture. So when you talk about intracapsular rupture, you see this fibrous shell that I said the body forms around it, and this is the shell of the uh, implant. So this rupture is just in the shell of the implant, and the silicon goes out, but it's still contained by the fibrous capsule. So you don't see free silicon. You won't see silicon in the breast. This is called intracapsular rupture. Extra capsular rupture, there's a hole in the, fib in the fibrous capsule as well as the shell. So the silicon goes outside the shell. So there's a, a rupture of the shell as well as the capsule. And these are the two things you need to know. What's an intracapsular rupture and an extra capsular rupture. Extra capsular rupture is easier to see on mammography and ultrasound, but the intracapsular rupture is more difficult and MRI is very good to see intracapsular rupture. So intracapsular rupture, you may just have bulging or deformity of the implant. You may have the keyhole sign, a teardrop sign, a salad oil sign, subscapular sign, and a linguine sign. So this is a, a keyhole sign where you see there's leakage into the, uh, the gel is trapped in between the folds of the, uh, caps of the membrane of the inner shell, and the, the membranes do not touch each other. This is a teardrop sign where the membranes actually touch each other. You again see fluid in between the two sides of the membranes and the membranes touching each other. This is a subscapularis line where you're actually seeing, you see a gel in, be in between the inner shell and in between the capsule. And you can see gel there. When you see silicone there, it's called a subscapular sign. And this is a sign of a minimally collapsed rupture. Here you can see the implant. There's subscapular, there's fluid in between the fi uh, fibrous capsule and the inner shell. So this is the subscapular sign. And here you can also see the te teardrop sign where you can see fluid and you can see the two membranes touching each other. Linguini sign. So what is linguini? We all describe the linguini sign. A linguini is a type of pasta. It's a little flatter than a spaghetti basically lines the shell uh, remains outside the fibrous shell and the inner shell the goes and just separates itself and floats in gel it's very very specific and sensitive for an implant rupture so if you see the linguini sign you can very very confidently say there is intracapsular rupture this is the linguini sign we are seeing floating it's just floating here you can see it in circles you can see it just as membrane linings just floating inside the gel. Extra capsular rupture. Basically, there's free silicon in the breast. It's better seen on water suppressed sequences. Uh, you can have it just floating in the pancama and sometimes they can form granulomas. So here you can see free si silicon that's escaped. You can see uh, there's dent in the fibrous capsule and there's free silicon into the breast, uh, suggesting free uh, extra capsular rupture. Here, there's extra capsular rupture that's almost forming a silicon granuloma right here. You can see the uh, contour of the breast implant is completely gone. Again, there's intracapsular and extracapsular rupture. Bilaterally, you can see linguini sign. You can see extra capsular rupture, and this is bilateral breast implant showing rupture. This is a collapsed saline implant. There's no need to do an MRI on this. Just to show you, you just see the shell, you can see the fluid is just completely absorbed into the breast. So in this, in a patient like this, an MRI is not indicated. It's just to show you what a saline implant would, a collapsed saline implant would look like. So in summary, signs of possible implant rupture are bulging border, a salad sign, a teardrop sign, or a keyhole sign. Definite signs are definitely linguini sign, subscapular sign, if there's free silicone, or a silicone granuloma, which may enhance on post-contrast imaging if you've also given contrast to the patients. And in conclusion, MR is definitely more accurate than mammography or ultrasound to detect implant rupture. If you do need to see 
diagnose breast pathology or a patient is high risk, then you do need to give contrast also when you image the patient.